Welcome YouTube friends and family to today's bonus edition of the Wellness Homesteader. So every once in a while, I will just get an urge to make a video and even if it isn't my regularly scheduled Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday schedule, I like to pop on and just share some thoughts. So today you find me in my dining room with all things soap. I am working very hard with my sippy cup on getting ready for holiday soap sales. So if you're um, eagerly anticipating what will be coming up, um, we're in the cure phase. So I'll be sharing that soon when it's available to order. Got a little bit of a late start this year. Just seems like there's always so much to do, right? So let me have a little sip here. My mouth is dry. So again, I had no, no intent on making a video. So you find me today in my favorite Goodwill sweatshirt and my new shacket. I had to wear my new shacket because I just like to say the word. So again, this, I'll try to remember to leave a link in the description box if you have interest. You can order them online. This particular one comes in red and gold. The last link that I left for you all was a little bit different shirt at a little bit different price that I had seen in Walmart. It had more color and sizing options available at the time. I know they're running low on this particular style, but hopefully that will change. And that brings me to today's topic. I want to just spend a little bit of time talking about what's going on without being political, without getting shadow banned by YouTube. I'm not here to talk about the V. I'm not here to talk about the government or anything negative like that. I just want to talk about what's going on because as I've said in many videos, winter is here. So I had a couple thoughts and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to pop on and share it with you. And I've long promised y'all a freezer tour. So we're going to do that this morning as well. So let's think back to last year. And guys, please feel free to add any comments below. The only thing I would ask is that you keep it kind to one another and that, you know, let's not go on and criticize the president, the government and all of that. Let's just not do that. Let's just talk about how we live within what's going on. That's a better solution. All right. So what was in short supply last year? Number one was toilet paper. So laughingly, you know, we have a close knit neighborhood, small community here. Anytime any one of us would find toilet paper, we would then just break up our multi-pack and share it because that's what good neighbor folk do, right? So um, I'm not seeing the same shortages right yet, but I'm going to quote some sources for you. So hopefully I don't get fact-checked because I do my research, guys. I don't tell you anything that I haven't read for myself. And I will tell you the source and you can go out and read it for yourself. So we had toilet paper. One of the things that I was really shocked at the shortages of, and maybe this is just my area, was bread flour. That was before I was grinding my own grain. And yeast, you could not find any kind of yeast in my area. And I thought, wow, I just don't think there's that many people making their own bread. And there was still bread, maybe not every brand on the shelf. So I I think people saw what was coming and maybe thought I need to get back into bread making or I need to learn to make bread. Other things we saw a huge short supply of pasta and convenience foods like um, I'll just say hamburger helper or those type of things. It was just ghost town. Any type of hand sanitizer, Clorox, or I should say chlorine bleach, um, germ killing cleaning products in very short supply, canning supplies, um, jars, lids, even canners you simply could not find. And then came a lot of price gouging, especially on Amazon because things were in high demand, short supply drives up prices, right? So what is 2021 slash 2022 going to look like. So we're going into, it's November now, we're going into the winter season. Um, if you live in a colder climate, but it, it's going to be winter for everyone in the U.S. nonetheless. So I took a look at insider.com 
And here's some of the things that I found. And yes, I'm gonna use talking notes so I don't misspeak. The USDA outlook for food prices is that we are going to see an increase of 2.9% to 9.6% across the board. So let's round up 9.6 to 10%. I'm here to tell you guys, prices have gone up a lot more than 10%, a lot more than 10%, at least in my area. And you all have been great to comment that you're seeing the same thing. So I don't know whether this article is saying an additional amount or um, that's what it's been going up, I don't know. But at any rate, prices are increasing. That's one fact we know for sure. The CEO of Yum Brands, so Yum um, has a lot of different restaurants. His name is David Gibbs, and they've had to remove flavored chicken items from their menus in many of their different change, chains due to limited supply. You know, there's been 160 meat processing plants, according to the Yum CEO, that have been shut down, whether it's because of the V, whether it's because of just lack of supplies, lack of workers. I'm not really sure. It's probably a myriad of things. A lot of things are stuck at port. So I started thinking about that and I thought, you know what? And, and this has been a long thought. So this didn't just happen this morning. I, I kind of alluded to some shortages and I thought, why don't I just talk about it and maybe we can come up with ideas together. I love it when you guys comment. So I love my coffee, but we've seen coffee prices increase dramatically. And I thought, okay, so we don't go grow coffee in the US. So it's imported. We know we have port troubles. So ships are unable to offload, but I actually found out um, globally, it's gone up 21.6% and just the Brazilian specialty coffee, I can't read my own handwriting guys, has gone up 40% and they are the number one supplier for US Arabica beans is Brazil. So why is this? climate change, global supply chain issues, the number of growers that Brazil has has gone down by 25% because they're also being affected by price increases, labor shortages, the V, whatever it might be, and droughts. And typically, did not know this, coffee will have a high producing year and a lower producing year. High, low, high, low, that's the way coffee grows. So this was a low producing year anyway, so the supply is shorter. So maybe one thing, and I'm trying guys, <laughs> but mama likes her coffee. I'm really trying to find other hot beverages that I like, like herbal teas. Uh, I grew a lot of mint, I grew a lot of lemon balm. They make delicious tea. It's just caffeine free, so I like my caffeine. However, if you slowly decrease your coffee intake, looking at prices you can still enjoy what you love and i would say buy it now don't buy it later because the supply isn't going to increase till next growing season for sure um so bloomberg also said that there has been a 12 year decline in production in brazil in general so less people producing because coffee bean farming isn't as profitable so we may be seeing price increases here, but that may not be trickling down or, or transferring over to the coffee bean grower because it has to do with transportation, shipping, those type of issues, rather than the farmers themselves raising the prices. Um, also, cheese. I'm like, okay, coffee and cheese are life. <laughs> I love me some cheese. Imported cheeses have dramatically decreased. And I saw a quote from one of the Costco higher up people that said it, it's been nearly impossible for them to get many of the type of imported cheeses they like. And they've also had for soft cheeses, they've had some growers, not growers, 
producers that have had listeriosis outbreaks, and that can be from contaminated food or soil, but listeriosis is often, it's treatable, but it's often fatal, and it's one of the things that can afflict cheese. So because of those outbreaks, there has also been less cheese production overall. I went to insider.com and just searched for 2022 Outlook, and the president of UPS, whose name is Scott Prince, is quoted saying, um, the global rate of the V, especially in underdeveloped countries, is contributing to shortages. And I'm sure if you all are news watchers, I'm a news reader. I do not watch television news at all. Um, there were like 6,000 workers in New York who lost their job for failure to comply with mandates. Leave it at that. So we're not out of this situation by any means. So there's been shutdowns, you know, required shutdowns, maybe locally or you know, almost US wide there at a point. There are labor shortages and you know, the government stepped in, they were helping people. I know people who would not work or would not accept another job because they were actually making more money with the federal subsidy and their unemployment. And I think that mentality was more prevalent than we would like it to be. Now that those federal subsidies have ended um, and the unemployment terms are not being extended greatly, at least not in the state of Ohio, I know that is state, um, there should be plenty of workers available, but there just doesn't seem to be. We've also had some historic weather occurrences, as we always do. You know, we have hurricanes. We had the big frost in Texas. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, we've had droughts, too, that have affected our crops, as well as lack of shipping containers. And I was like, well, why don't they just make more shipping containers? But it's been sort of like a chain effect, and y'all probably know this, but not being a news watcher, being only a reader, um, sometimes I don't get the big picture. But the shipping containers are all sitting in ports waiting to be unloaded. And since there is a short supply of truckers to distribute, there are many full shipping containers sitting in ports that have been offloaded, but they don't have anybody to distribute it. So it is a huge chain reaction problem. So all of our shipping containers have been used up and there's really little point of manufacturing more when we can't distribute what we have and we can't offload what is waiting. So this I found very interesting. Shipping rates between Asia and the US has increased five hundred percent over the last year. So if you think about all of these factors that I'm telling you, I think that this estimation of increases of 2.9 to 9.6 percent are grossly underestimated. Just my opinion. Alrighty. Um, Kroger, which is the nation's largest supermarket. We have Kroger here. Sometimes Kroger is called something different in different states, but it's owned by Kroger. Um, they just announced, I think it was at the 1st of October, it was either late September 1st of October, that they were going to raise prices. I mean, they did like a, like a major announcement. And, and guys, they have they pretty much have to. I mean, they're supplying us the goods. They're not producing the goods. But look at all these factors that are happening along the supply chain that are definitely going to impact what we're paying. There are some other things that I did not realize. There's a computer chip shortage. So that is going to impact car manufacturers primarily. And also... Um, due to the Texas freeze and Ida, 
there is a petrochemical shortage. So there are certain products made from petrochemicals that we are going to find increasing in price and being in short supply as well. We've also started to see, according to NBC.com, uh, purchase limits being reinstated. I have seen some of them in my area. It's primarily for things I don't purchase. Um, one thing I do purchase is toilet paper, but there are purchase limits there. Bottled water, I do not purchase. Definitely purchase limits there. And also there have been some purchase limits on meats, like uh, bacon in particular in my area. So turkey and ham is also increasing in price because of the meat packaging plant shutdown or meat producing plants, I guess, the shutdowns. So what does everybody want for the holidays? Turkey and ham. I have two turkeys. I don't have any ham in the freezer. Um, canned food. So I was like, okay, now come on now. We we in the U.S. can produce food, and, and I just don't understand why you can't get canned food. That doesn't make sense. Well, we're still dealing with the aluminum shortage. So I know I don't drink soda, but my mother does, and she drinks caffeine-free Diet Coke. The woman weighs 95 pounds, and she drinks Diet Pop. But anyway, she probably doesn't need all the sugar. But at any rate... She can only now get it in bottles, which is an issue because I purchased this little device that you kind of looks like a can opener. You slide it on the tab and it makes it a lot easier because her dexterity is not good. So now we have to get for her the plastic bottles that unscrew. She can't, she doesn't have the strength to do that. So we have to open so many of them for her ahead of time so that when the caregiver is not present, she will have, you know, be able to drink, Lord forbid she couldn't have her caffeine-free Diet Coke and her Hershey bars and her Lay's potato chips, just saying. Um, small business trends says, turkeys, canned food, okay, wait for this, ketchup packets. And I'm like, well, why would there be a shortage of ketchup packets? Well, think about it. There has been a lot of curbside pickup um, a lot of to going because of the V. So those condiment packages produced by Heinz primarily are in super short supply. So they're having to go to, you know, like using those plastic containers with the lid, which are more expensive. And, you know, they're putting a, a larger quantity of product in those. So it's costing them more. Pet food. Guys, I am having trouble with pet supplies in general. So Hanky Panky Frankie will only eat <laughs> orange limes. Now, if he got hungry enough, perhaps he might eat something else. But um, I have gotten him other kinds of food, and he's like, mm, yeah, no, mama, I need the orange limes. So I have it on auto shipped along with a specific kind of litter. And if you all are cat owners, you know that changing their litter can be an issue, and you, you do not want that. So I've always ordered Dr. I think it's Elsie's cat litter. Um, I'm just a real big fan of their clumping cat litter. So every month I get one of each of those comes. Well, the last two months I have not gotten my delivery it comes on the 17th of the month and it has been much later. So I have started stocking up. I can't get the litter anywhere else but Amazon so far. Um, I haven't gone to a pet supply store. They might have it. But anyway, I've been stocking up on Frankie's food because, um, you know, he's going to need his orange limes. And have the prices gone up? You betcha. Especially on the plumping cat litter. So that is a problem. Um, oat milk. Now, I could not get to the bottom of what's wrong with the oat crop. Uh, I heard another YouTuber talk about how oats have gone up dramatically in price. I buy my oats in bulk, and I have not seen that yet. But I also buy in such bulk, I'm not going to need any oats for like, I don't know, maybe a year. So I'm okay there. Uh, beef, we all know how expensive beef is. Bottled water I already talked about. Okay, and this cracked me up. Lunchables. Now, I'm not so out of touch that I don't know what a Lunchable is. You know, the little prepackaged things that kids like to have for their lunch. I guess there's a shortage of Lunchables. <laughs> I'm not sure why. They usually have like cheese and crackers and maybe some 
like dried fruit and uh, meat in there. But um, yeah, so guys, stock up on your Lunchables. I don't buy a lot of prepackaged convenience foods, so I don't know a lot about that. Liquor. Okay, I'm not a drinker, but liquor is also in short supply. And the reason behind that, according to what I'm reading, is that people are home more and they're drinking more. So take that for what it's worth. Bread, toilet paper. And back when we had the toilet paper shortage, like towards the end of 2020, several of the big wigs at the major toilet paper producers said, we know statistically Americans use X rolls of toilet paper per, per person per year, and we're not going to up our production because if we do that, we're gonna end up with a great big stock Pardon me, because people have this large supply and then, you know, our sales are going to dip to nothing. So we're just going to continue to produce at the same rate. Now, that was in 2020. I did not study the toilet paper trends for purposes of this video. And then the last thing um, that is a small business trend for 2022 is frozen meals. So my mom, unfortunately, you know, when your adult parent starts to develop dementia, eating can be like a huge issue. And my mom will only eat Marie Callender frozen meals. And I know sometimes when the caregiver is shopping, she will have to go to two or three stores just to find mom's favorites. And, you know, I have cooked for mom and it, it's a losing battle. She won't eat it. Um, I mean, she doesn't think it's poison or anything, but, and I think I am a good cook. It's, it's just not what she's grown used to. I mean, frozen meals have, they're highly salted. And I, I think that's part of why she's so attracted to the frozen meals. But at any rate, shortage in 2022. So what can you do? So I was watching Freedom Homestead this morning. And I actually had a couple people say, which I deleted that comment, and I'm not mad about it. I just don't. I thought I'm just going to address it on a video. Why are you shouting out other channels? Well, guys, I really believe that YouTubers should be a community, and we shouldn't be in competition with each other. We should be supporting each other. There are enough people in this world, and my channel is very small. I have about 2,300 subscribers that... You know, I'm not everybody's cup of tea and my content isn't. So we don't have to compete with each other. We can be a community. So if you've, she will have no clue as to who I am, but I do watch her channel regularly and um, they have some great content. But she was saying this morning and the title of her video, and that's what got me to thinking, start where you are, work with what you have, do the best you can. And I thought, you know what, that's probably the best way if you're feeling like, oh my word, after I've shared all this with you. And I, I, I'm not saying it to discourage you. I'm sharing it with you to make you aware of what I'm able to read and as well as what I see. And I do share that. So I've been sharing so many grocery hauls and I will be sharing an Azure standard haul this week on Thursday. Um, so... Start where you are, work with what you have, do the best you can. So I do want to say one other thing, guys. Be smart about doing what you can. So this morning, I was looking at my salt supply. And I primarily buy non-iodized salt, whether it's pink Himalayan or sea salt or whatsoever. And I was like, you know what? I should just get a 25-pound bag. That's really just what I need to do. Because if we get to the point where we have to do a lot of home preserving, especially of wild meat, I don't know if I can eat it, but you know, if I got hungry enough, I bet you I could. Um, I went out on Amazon and I also went to walmart.com just to see what bulk options they had because it will be another month before I can order, get, a, get an Azure order for bulk salt. I have ordered some, like maybe five pounds of pink Himalayan, but... I use a fair amount of salt with my canning, etc. So the 25 pounds on Walmart of real salt is the brand, real salt. 
and um, I actually had to go to their website and read to see if it was non-iodized because there was no description on Walmart. 25 pounds was $130.70. Now I'm smart enough to know that's like way, 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 way over the top. So I looked on Amazon and Morton table salt. And I went to the Morton website and I verified this. It is non-iodized. You could get a four pound box quantity of nine for $29. Okay, so that's 36 pounds for $29 versus 25 pounds for 130. So do your research, do your homework, know what average prices are. And I think Walmart, you know, a lot of times it, it'll say fulfilled by in another company. I think they just have like random fulfillment people on there. So I, I knew better than to order that, but just know your prices, especially if you're wanting to order in bulk. What else can you do? Guys, I did a whole video and I will try to link that at the end. Well, it's in the prepping series. I'll link the prepping series at the end. Like skills you need to learn now, learn to cook because you can take basic ingredients, put them together and have a really delicious meal. And you don't have to rely on Lunchables or Marie Callender's frozen meals. You can have a healthier dish. You can have a less expensive dish. And maybe cooking is not like your favorite thing. Start by learning how to cook your favorite foods. And when you learn how much better it's going to taste, you'll, I think you'll be a convert. The second thing, we may need to adjust our intake of high demand products like coffee. So I am trying to cut back my coffee consumption. So if I look a little sleepy, <laughs> it's because I'm cutting back on my caffeine gradually. But you know, there's a limit to how much I'm willing to spend on items that aren't essential to my nutrition and health. All right, here's another thought. Buy local, guys. Support your local farmers, whether you're buying um, meat, eggs, vegetables, whether you join a CSA, Community Supported Agriculture, and that's where you purchase access to food up front before the growing season so the farmer has that money when they most need it to do all the planting and fertilizing and whatsoever and, and just know what the quantities are that you get for that but we need to stop as a country relying on overseas production of everything that we can produce here ourselves so the more we can support our local community farmers the better off we are going to be Better yet, also learn, see what you can produce for yourself. And then finally, my final thought was use less. Now, I'm not proposing that, that you go hungry, that you deprive yourself, your children, your husband, whatever your situation might be. But I got thinking about it, and I had mentioned in another video about perhaps um, our no spin January. And we did it last year. So what all that is, guys, is just because everybody can can be a little bit overwhelmed with the spending through November, December, is just using what you have on hand for the month of January so that you at least eliminate high grocery costs in January. That's what it's all about. So I started thinking, I thought, you know, that's really what rationing during the Great Depression was all about, is using less and making do with what you had on hand. So I, I have a lot of books, guys. And I, my iPad is in here marking a page. This is called Hard Times Cookbook with Back to Basics, Great Depression Cooking. It's by Anna Patterson. And I tell you, just reading the book is super entertaining because he, here are some of the things that you'll find in there. And, and this is um, sayings from people who lived during the Great Depression. Um, Always be on the lookout for kitchen utensils at a secondhand shop, yard sales, online, anywhere you might pick them up, and then keep them, and most of all, use them. Always clean them good with very hot, soapy water. Old time hint, you need to hold a match, I haven't tried this yet, or a toothpick between your teeth while peeling onions, and the fumes won't make you cry. <laughs> Who knew? Maybe it's because it makes you breathe through your mouth. I'm not really sure. Um... 
there is just so many really cool things in here. So I thought oh, I should do like, let's live like the Great Depression for a week. And I thought, you know, that might fit in really good with our No Spin January. So if you would, drop me a comment below. Would you rather we put the Great Depression in with our No Spin January, not to be depressing, or do you want it separated? That, that will help me out. So <clears throat> it smells amazing in here, guys. I have um, been sipping with essential oils. So I have lavender soap. I have my charcoal facial soap, which is tea tree, lavender, and peppermint. I have my peppermint soap, and these are shaped soaps. And then across the way, I have a clove, cinnamon, and orange essential oil soap that is amazing. The pretty blue and teal here is custom order, so that's been curing for quite a while. So I am going to have some lovely soaps for us come um, later this month, towards the end of the month. All right, so I'm going to pause for just a minute, and as promised, I'm going to show you the freezer tour. I'm going to tell y'all, just like I tell everybody else, if you tell anybody how bad my garage looks, we're going to have a problem. So I'm going to try to do this without showing you my garage. It's not that bad, guys. It's just there. I have a lot of stuff. Yes. All right. Stay tuned. All right. Well, let me share with you first. This is a GE freezer. It does have the digital controls on the front. It does have an alarm. Um, it also locks here if you have worries about children trying to get into the freezer. So this is my newer freezer. Over here, I have an idealist, I think, chest type freezer. So this is about seven cubic feet. This is 14. So here we go. So this I've had for quite some time. Right now what I have in here is all things poultry and a few things dairy. So if you've never tried freezing milk, guys, it works. It's great. It's fine. Thaw it in the fridge, takes a couple days, tastes delicious. And I don't drink a lot of cow's milk. I wanted to have some on hand for the holidays. So when I see it on sale, I will purchase it. Um, I do uh, vacuum seal things. So this is the stewed chicken for my legs. I have turkeys. Um, often has the two pack of chicken for 95 cents a pound. I do have some great value chicken breasts. And then back here, I have some crispy chicken strips because that's all my mom <laughs> eat. So I have four chickens. I have two turkeys. I, you know, I don't have like a ton, but I was able to uh, defrost this and clean it out. So I've got lots of room. And one of the reasons is when I buy grain, I like to freeze the whole 25 pound bag. So that gives me the room to do so. I do love my new freezer. One of the things I really like is that it has these shallow trays on the door. So stock up on your butter, guys. So I have salted and unsalted in a couple places. Um, SAF yeast some of my basil that I froze from my garden this year, my emergency coffee supply. And then I do buy heavy whipping cream and half and half. Um, that's heavy whipping cream as well for cooking and baking. And then I always have it on hand. Up here, uh, some of my tomatoes from my garden, some frozen spaghetti sauce in the back. This is a base for butternut squash soup and just some miscellaneous, you know, gotta have your crispy crowns, you know, some miscellaneous things, some sauerkraut, etc. This shelf is all of my frozen fruit. So bananas, guys, when your bananas turn brown or, you know, start to get beyond themselves, just smash them up, vacuum seal them. This is all the cherries I bought this summer. Oh gosh, I've got apples frozen so I can just and there's a piece of fish. I can just pull these out, make an apple crisp, a small apple crisp, or an apple pie using several packages. Woo wee! Yeah, and that'll cut your foot off too. <laughs> so, let me. That is actually butternut squash as well. 
I'm not sure why it's on that shelf, but we'll leave it there. This shelf is all pork and my emergency bread. So I have sausage, I have bacon. I actually have four pounds of bacon. When you find it at a good price, guys, snap it up. Pork chops. I do a lot of repackaging in vacuum sealing. Sorry, I'm all over the place. And you hear my alarm because I've had the door open too long. Um, so whether it's pork loin or pork chops, that is in manageable amounts for me. I don't have a lot of beef products. I do have some roast, some burger, once, a couple steaks, some extra half and half. Down here, for emergency reasons, a couple Popeyes, some cornmeal mix, um, some bread, some cookies, and then the rest of this, guys, is all goat's milk. So yeah, I better shut the door before it explodes. But this gave me a lot of extra room so I can prep besides just canning and having things on my shelf. Guys, I hope you have enjoyed today's video. I mean this as an encouragement, not a discouragement. You know, being well informed and knowing how you need to proceed for yourself, for your family. I mean, maybe coffee is not an issue to you, but um, canned soda is. You know, knowing is power. Knowledge is power. So as I learn things, I do like to share them with you, not because I think y'all don't know, but because you might not know, or you might not be thinking about it, or you may be busy with life. I know I certainly get overwhelmed. <laughs> I have to take a big breath to say that. Just a lot of things, you know, going on with my mother right now, and um, just her needing more assistance, etc. cetera. But, um, you know, God is good. He's faithful to help, so I'm, I'm very grateful for that. And I'm very grateful for each and every one of you. I am going to be starting, as you all know, I'm going to say it every single video, my old-fashioned Christmas video start on Saturday. I am so excited to do it. Um, I've spent quite a bit of time getting ready for it, so I hope it will come out really, really nice, and I hope you all will really enjoy it. So we're going to start in the 1920s. And there'll be a lot of good information for you. Just interesting facts. We're going to do a craft and we're also going to bake. It may be a longer video, guys. You know I'm incapable of doing a short video. I try. I try. I was really proud of my seven-minute <laughs> Halloween home tour. I was like, yes. I finally did a short video. So if you would and you enjoyed today's content, go ahead and smash that like button. Drop me a comment below. I love hearing from each and every one of you. So many of you have been with me for a long time, and I can always count on seeing, you know, your little icon if you have your picture, you know. I feel like I know y'all. I feel like you're my friends, and you are my friends. And as well as my family members who do watch my channel, I appreciate each and every one of you so much. So as always, be healthy, be well, be blessed. I will see you all Thursday. Take care.